Amen. But uh, the text of the Bible we're going to be reading tonight is Jeremiah, Genesis chapter 26. We're going to read in Genesis chapter 26. That's where we're going to be anchoring our message for today. Genesis 26. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 26 from 12 to 24. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about sowing in times of farming and in times of drought. Amen. In the most difficult times. Praise the Lord. Reaping harvest in the difficult times. Amen. This is a very unusual topic tonight, but what does that mean? Only God, amen, praise the Lord, only God can make a way where there seems to be no way. God always make a way. I know many of you are waiting, uh, uh, anticipating the move of God one way or the other in your life. Maybe there are some areas, the gray areas of your life, or huge mountains in your life that you are anticipating the move of God. I want to show you tonight, the Bible says that they that come to him must believe. We must believe in our heart that he is the rewarder to those that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So tonight, let's seek the face of the Lord diligently. Amen. And see, hallelujah, how God turns situations around. Especially in uncertain times. God is still on the throne. Amen. He has not ceased to be the God, the Jehovah Jireh, the mighty provider that he has been even before. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as long as the earth abides, sowing time and reaping time, harvests and sowing and harvest time will never cease. As long as the earth abides, hallelujah, until Jesus Christ returns. The earth has been commanded, hallelujah, to produce, to yield for you. Hallelujah. All we need to do is to scratch up the earth, scratch the earth, hallelujah. Sow the right seed. Amen. Plant the right seed. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Regardless of the time, God has already commanded your fruits to bring forth the earth, the ground, to yield forth its fruits for you and for me in Jesus' name. Amen. So we let's go. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Good evening. Once again, my name is Apostle Justin Emenike, Senior Pastor at New Life Redemption Church. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. Special grace of God. Hallelujah. I am here this evening to speak word of encouragement, word of life, word of faith, word of deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. To declare the promises of God over your life and it shall come to pass in the name of jesus now this is what the lord says i have brought all this i have allowed all these calamities on these people so i will give them all the prosperity i have promised them once more right once more fields will be bought in this land of which you say it is a desolate waste without men or animals, for it has been handed over to the Babylons. But yet the Lord says, hallelujah, things are going to turn around in your favor, in the favor of those that stand, hallelujah, to witness the promises of God. Amen, the Lord, on those that are on the Lord's side. Amen. Genesis 26, it says, and now there was a famine in the land. This is Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. It says that now there was a famine in the land. Amen. As many of us know, the story of the history of the children of Israel in general in the Bible, it's interwoven with a time of drought and rain season. Rains were not often heard at that time. They had rain very, very few times in the year. Hallelujah. God is also aware of the seasons and the weathers. The drought, the rain, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, perhaps, amen, hallelujah, where in a part of the country where you are right now, amen, you have rains in abundance. Praise the Lord. But also in, in terms of spiritually speaking, hallelujah, because in the times of the Bible, in the Old Testament time, even in the New Testament time, they were predominantly farmers, sheep rarers, cattle rarers, amen. And so, it, it can be a little difficult to relate 
when we speak about literally we speak about rain seasons and drought and to the farmer a farmer understands the importance of rain praise the lord this was way before modern mechanization system where an uh, irrigation system were used by farmers who have to dug boreholes in order to get water to uh, to water their plants so we are speaking about thousands of years praise the Lord before Christ was even born and even yet when Christ was born there was no irrigation system praise the Lord the farming method then hallelujah yeah, there was an irrigation system but it wasn't as mechanized hallelujah as you have today amen praise the Lord until a man of God J. Isaac came to the scene. Amen? So now here's what the story is saying to us. So when we speak about famine or drought in people's life, spiritually speaking, you might not be a farmer, but in terms of business, there might be some kind of drought, business not growing in the dimension, in the area that you want it to grow. When we say people are in Egypt, we are not saying spiritually, uh, in literal sense that people have gone back to physical Egypt, but it's a spiritual, biblical way of making references to what the children of God faced, hallelujah, when they were in Egypt. So in the biblical speaking, hallelujah, theologically speaking, Egypt means, by interpretation, a place of bondage, hallelujah, praise the Lord, it means a place of bondage. And spiritually means when you are not, hallelujah, flooding, living, experiencing, the blessings, the full blessings of God for your life. So in spiritually speaking, we can say such person is in a place of bondage. It's in the Egypt. Hallelujah. When they are not free, hallelujah, under some kind of satanic or demonic spiritual evil possessions or dominance. Hallelujah. When somebody is under spiritual strongholds, we could refer to such person as being under Egypt. He may praise the Lord, but not literally speaking as the nation of Egypt today. So the same way we can we speak about the biblical times, amen, hallelujah, the farming times of the Old Testament times, in the times of Elijah, times of the prophet Isaiah, in the times of prophet Elisha, praise the Lord, in the Old Testament time, the Lord is using these times to teach us, hallelujah, the stories, hallelujah, that occur those times can literally be used in the present day context as to say what they are experiencing uh, we can uh, uh, interpret it to mean spiritually, praise the Lord, when we say somebody's in their, in their drought season, not necessarily mean that they are not experiencing physical rain, but it could mean financially they are in a drought because financially their bank account or their business is not growing. Hallelujah. So when, you, when we prophetically begin to say somebody will experience overflow, hallelujah, with abundance of rain and open heaven, Hallelujah, it's a prophetic and spiritual way of declaring the blessings of heaven, the abundance of heaven. Hallelujah, that, that the abundance of rain, which means, hallelujah, your farm, I'm not speaking, you might not be a farmer, but your source of livelihood, amen, is what I'm making connection to, amen. Hallelujah. So now we have this Bible says, Genesis chapter twenty. 6 verse from verse 1 he said now there was a famine in the land amen hallelujah beside the earlier famine of abraham time and isaac went to abimelech king of philistines in berea bible said there was a famine in the land bible says god use what the enemy have meant to harm you only god can turn it around and use it for his glory and for your benefit and for my benefit Amen. What the enemy had planned, the traps the enemy had laid for you, the, the marginalization of the enemy, the wicked plot and plans of the enemy. If you trust on God, hold on to him. God is capable of falling around. Hallelujah. What the enemy had planned, plot, scheme to use to bring you down. Only God of the heavens and the earth can flip and turn it around. To work for your good. Bible says goodness and mercy. Jeremiah 23 verse 12. He says goodness and mercy will follow you. Amen. The Bible says if your ways is right with the Lord God. He will make your enemies to be at peace with you. If your ways are right with God. 
So every day we strive to make our way right with God. But I would say there is none that is perfect. None is perfect for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. And God knows our weaknesses. But He all, we are, but He's looking at us in areas, hallelujah, we are, praise the Lord, working towards, hallelujah, the person that He has called us to be. He knows our weaknesses and that's why He gave us the Holy Spirit to strengthen you and to strengthen me. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. So now the Bible said there was a ferment in the land. And ferment was one of those times in the Old Testament era when there's no people spend time, they do not have rain falling for a while. The farmers, which are economically dependent, people are economically dependent on the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. In order for the crops to grow, the sheep to have, and the kettles to have more grass, healthy grass to feed upon. Hallelujah. And then this will go into this season of lack of rain. Hallelujah. God allowed these things in order to teach the people lessons and to draw their attention to Him. Because the Bible says, Hallelujah, we should love the Lord our God and only Him should we serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now there was a famine in the land beside the earlier one that recorded during the time of Abraham's time. And Isaac, whom the immediate descendants of Abraham is also now witnessing drought in the land. So what happened to Abraham, Isaac? Isaac now decided to go down to Gerar, a part in the province of the Philistines. When people immigrate and leave their land, many people leave for economic reasons because there is a drought of job, a drought of employment opportunities, there is a drought of health facilities there's a drought praise the lord in humanitarian services hallelujah there's a drought praise the lord in safety and security there's a drought hallelujah in many areas of life people migrate move immigration people immigrating has been an ancient things hallelujah right even before the time of jesus christ praise the lord and people move from city to city, nation to nations, during the time of the biblical time, looking for a better life because of drought, of services and provisions and opportunities that were not there. They move, they get attracted to the cities because of the abundant opportunities that life, that those places provide. Amen. People are forced to move. People are forced to immigrate. Amen. To migrate. Amen. To the urban cities, to thriving cities, to places where there's opportunities. Egypt at the time of uh, uh, Moses' time, Egypt was most thriving, most successful city of the time. Praise the Lord. It was Egypt as we know. It's an ancient civilization. And people are attracted to come to Egypt. Praise the Lord because that is the center city of buying and selling. And this was the time also in Egypt, praise the, around the time of Moses, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Egypt was a thriving city of commerce and industry. People are coming from different areas. Praise the Lord. Remember the world population was not as populous as it, as it is now. But yet Egypt was the center of civilization and the center of commerce. And just as Babylon at one time was a thriving city of commerce. Praise the Lord. Just as Rome at one time was a thriving city of commerce and industry and politics. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This was also what happened during the time of Joseph. Egypt was a city and a center, hallelujah, of commerce. Alexandra was the center capital of city of, of uh, capital of industries and commerce and science and technology. It was a thriving city of the time. Amen? <clears throat> so people were, uh, were, were, were compelled to move, hallelujah. As you know, if we can reference to the time of Joseph, it was also drought that brought Joseph brothers to travel from Israel to come to Egypt and, and look, looking for grains, to purchase grains because there was a drought all in the, throughout the Middle East era. Amen? Praise the Lord. But God's hand is still at work. God is still working. God still interferes in the affairs of man. God works with times and season. God works with time and season. Time and season does not constrain God. God is not limited by rainy season or the drought season. God is not limited by the winter. God is not limited by, by summer. God is not even limited by storms. Amen. God is the God is not subject, amen, to the weather, to the or to the atmospheric condition. All of these times, all of the elements 
hallelujah, in these different seasons, hallelujah, bow before the Lord. Amen. So he is God of the mountains. Also, he is God of the valleys. So when you are in your on your in your valleys time, and what I mean by that, meaning when you are in your times of drought, maybe another word for that is the times of valleys. Because the valleys in the Bible refers to a times of drought, a times of hallelujah, lack. Amen. When you are in that season, praise the Lord, God is also there. Amen. So maybe tonight, maybe financially you are not in the place that you really envisage or you hope that you want to be. Hallelujah. But trust our God. The Bible says He is Jehovah Jireh. He is a mighty provider. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you do your part, God will do His part. Praise the Lord. There are certain things surrounding life. It's not just about prayers. It's also about applications of knowledge. Amen. Applications of wisdom. Amen. Because wisdom is the applications of knowledge. Certain things in life, it's not just about prayer. It's about action. Amen. It's about action. It's about faith. It's about it's about applying the principles, hallelujah, that God has laid up for us in order to receive overflow in the name of Jesus. So now the Bible says, continue Genesis 26, from 1, the Bible says now that and, 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 and Isaac had gone down to to the Philistines in a town called Gerea, and the, the king of that town name is Abimelech. Amen. You know, if you read this verse and you have read the previous verse, you will notice that there is a similar behavior between Abraham and Isaac. Amen. Perhaps this should have been a Father's Day message where children often tell all their parents' behavior. Praise the Lord, they mimic their parents' behavior. When you get older, you begin to see that there's certain elements, certain character of your parents that you begin to exhibit, that you begin to wonder. Maybe, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why genes are, is very powerful. Gene is very powerful. They say blood is thicker than water. Praise the Lord. As you begin to get older, you begin to see certain characteristics and certain behavior, hallelujah, of your parents that is embedded in you, uh, which, which, which is a clear indication that you are carrying the genes of your parents. Amen. The Bible said then, Isaac sowed seed in that land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. Praise the Lord. Isaac sowed, even though there was a drought in that land. There was a drought. There was no rain. Hallelujah. There was no rain. Yet Isaac sowed in that land and he received a hundred, what, a hundred times. Seed, fruits of what he had planted. And the Lord favored him with blessings. Verse 13. We are reading from, yes, from verse 12. I'm sorry. Now this is verse 13. Genesis 26, 12, 13 to 14. The Bible says, so Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord favored him with blessings. Amen. Nobody does not. Everybody wants blessing. Amen. Blessings attract, but curse repels. Amen. Blessing attracts. Amen. There's something about blessing that it, keep, it draws people, the good and the ugly and the bad. Amen. Blessing attracts. Curse repels. Amen. Blessing attract the good, the bad, and the ugly. But we have to learn to sift what the blessings upon our life attracts. Praise the Lord. So Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord favored him with blessings. Look, verse 13. And the man became great and gained more and more until he became even very wealthy. And distinguished. <coughs> the Lord blessed him so much that he grew even more. And that he became distinguished. He owned flocks, herds, and the great mighty supply of servants. And the Philistines envied him. See? He had tried the blessing, and tried good, the bad, and the ugly. What is the Lord speaking to us tonight concerning this very verse? Genesis 26, 12 to 14. That's what we are key anchor of our Bible study tonight. Isaac sowed into the land. This was not a time of plenty. It was a time of famine, an unusual time. In Genesis 32, Genesis 32, from 1 to 25, we saw when the Babylonians came to capture the children of Israel and take them to Babylon, 
Praise the Lord. There was confusion. You can imagine that. There was confusion all over. People were being huddled and put into ships and, 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 and to be carried away to Babylon according to God's commandments. Seventy years, the Lord has said, the children of Israel must go to Babylon. Taken away, cutting away to Babylon for 70 years. God works in mysterious ways. Children of God, we don't live by flesh. We don't live by our feelings. We don't live by what we feel. Because that could be deceiving. We are not moved by our feelings. Do not live by the dictate of your flesh. Amen? By the things, dictate of the things of this world. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. He said, we should not be conformed to the things of this world. Do not hold, do not switch your, 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 your motives, your actions. Even you are serving the Lord based upon the, the dictate of the things of the system of this world. Because nothing is permanent. He said, but in all things, hallelujah, we should, amen, we should be moved by the powers of the Holy Spirit so that we can maybe confirm to the image of God, amen, and know also the acceptable things of the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Isaac sowed in the land, not in time of plenty, but in time of famine. And it's very unusual time that we live. And this might be a kind of message some of us don't, may not want to hear. Especially when it's a time when many people say it is uncertain times. Praise the Lord. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, even during this season we are in, people are still buying houses, new, moving into new homes. And people are graduating. People are graduating. I saw people are graduating June is a month of, uh, in, in, of graduation. People are, have, have graduated. Praise the Lord. If some people have procrastinated and said they would not do what they needed to do about their careers and studies, you know, they wouldn't graduate. But even in the midst of this season, people are still graduating. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. People are closing their deals and buying new properties and moving, buying lands for, for better days ahead. Amen. God is still speaking to people to purchase and hallelujah, to, 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 to invest. Amen. To buy shares and stocks and whatever area the Lord is asking you to invest. Because Jesus said the time that he would come, the hour said no man knoweth that he will come like a thief at midnight. Should we then close up our uh, investment and, or, and, and, and shut in ourselves and build a cave of, across the doors and blockage and stay in, indoors and wait for the return of the Son of God? Or are we to occupy and possess our blessings and continue to reach out, win souls for God, invest in souls, of, uh, 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 hallelujah, win souls for the kingdom of God and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ even during this season? Amen. Use our testimonies. Use the skills and the talents of what God has given to you to reach out to your neighbors and, and, and reach out to your co-workers. Amen. Reach out to people in your immediate environs, your family members, those that you can call on the phone and those that you can visit and your, 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 your people that are at work. And reach out to them and still remind them God is still on the throne. Praise the Lord. Because when we speak about sowing times, people always think about money. And for those people who always think about money, they get un uncomfortable when every time pastors mention or sometimes when we mention sowing times and harvest times and people say here yeah, it's about money. It's not always about money. Also mean about harvesting of sowing of souls. Jesus says to the disciples, come unto me and I will make you fishers of men. Praise the Lord. Sow, sowing, planting, hallelujah, soul of winning soul for the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. I, perhaps God has called me, has not called me to win millions. Maybe God has called me to win thousands. Maybe God has called me to win hundreds. Praise the Lord. Maybe in the midst of that hundreds or that tens, they will be the one that will draw the millions. But I have to plant the word in their heart. I have to sow the word of life, word of faith in their life. I have to encourage them. I have to prophetically declare the promises of God, even at the time when they are down. Or when, even when they are up to remind them of the promises of God and the blessings of God. That these blessings that the times of the harvest that we are receiving is all up from God. You remember what Joseph did in the time of Egypt when it was a seven years of abundance, seven years of overflow. Joseph was able to tap into heavenly realms.
to, to, to understand through God divine provid, provisions of vision. Hallelujah. <coughs> that this time of firming uh, of harvest will be preceded, will be followed by, amen, will be followed by seven years of what, drought. So Joseph was able to economically advise, that was what we refer to as Joseph's ministry. He was able to advise the people that these seven years of prosperity will be followed immediately with seven years of drought. The economic glove, what we refer to all your glove for those in the economics, it means abundant, overflow. There's always a time in the children of God when everyone God has created, your talent begin to, money begin to come into your hand. I, I, I saw a lady was saying money was coming from everywhere. Everything she, her business was flowing and growing. The Lord just allowed the windows of heaven to open and the, her, her, her business was growing. Those are everyone, every one of us have those seasons when there's an overflow in your life. And, and if you apply Joseph principles, you ought to understand that those seasons will be followed by years of drought. So you plan well. In African proverb, they say time is money. You have to manage. Hallelujah. They say time na money. Time na money. Which means time. Amen. Money is measured by time. Amen. And that's also used in the modern economic sense, the modern palace. It's a common sense. Time is money. So in every man, every human being God created, there is a season. That's what the Bible says. There's a season under the earth. There's a season when you 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 scratch anything. I mean, whatever you have, whether it's scrap metal business you are in or you are in hairdressing salon business, you are a barber, maybe you are, you're working in regular office, you're an accountant. There's a season where, hallelujah, you, you receive the peak season of your life where money will be flooding. Hallelujah. Businesses are growing. God gave each one of us those times, those talents. And be wise like Joseph to save because always the cycle of life followed that after those seasons will be followed by a season of drought of your life. Amen. So you have to plan well. Joseph was able to advise Egypt economy, Egypt experts to save for the seven years that follows the abundance. Amen. So we spoke about Jeremiah 32. Praise the Lord. And the Lord instructed Jeremiah to purchase the, a land. It's a sign of guarantee that what was happening at that moment, amen, would not last forever. The Bible says, weeping endure it for night, but joy cometh in the morning. I have been young. Now I have seen, amen, hallelujah. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Amen. Now I have been young, now I'm old. Now I'm getting old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. The Lord rewards you the labors of your love. As it sowed in the land, not in times of plenty. People always think in times of plenty is always time to sow. When you have that job, it's time to sow. When you become a pastor, time to you win souls. When you have time, you would reach out to somebody and preach about the message of salvation. It's always when you have that time or when you have that right job, when you make that money, you will plant seed in the church. You will sow. Praise the Lord. You will give that amount. But I tell you, praise the Lord, there is never the right time. There is never the right amount of money. Praise the Lord. Even in the meager salaries, in the meager income that you have, there should be a portion for the sowing time. Because harvest time will always follow sowing time. Harvest time always follow the sowing time. This is what the Bible says. Harvest always follows seed time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Seed time does not always follow harvest. It's what harvest that always follows sowing time. Seed time. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when it comes to cultivating the land in this where we are thinking today, considering what the Lord is speaking to us, when it comes to cultivating, when it comes to tilting the land, scratching the surface, busting the ground, hallelujah, hallelujah, when it comes to planting, when it comes to using your talent, your skills, hallelujah, in the frontiers of your business, in this 
natural world, in this world that we live in the present day time, the middle of a drought and famine is definitely not the op opportune time, not the right time to sow seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Because this is the way mind, human, our mind thinks that in times of pandemic and famine, it's not time to go to school, it's not time to buy a house, it's not the time, it's time to just praise the Lord. Maybe the money for that money you are making now, the savings that you have is just for yourself. Praise the Lord, time to purchase and, and engage in uh, things that are just personal, maybe more entertainment. It's not time to invest. But yet, we have billionaires, have people have made billions. Even during this pandemic, we have new billionaires have joined. Many men and women have joined the club of billionaires and millionaires and trillionaires and thousand years. Even during this season of pandemic from last year, hallelujah, the business, the commerce and industry have shifted. From last year to now, the mode of business have shifted. And those who understood, hallelujah, the sign of the time, were able to shift their business, hallelujah, in order to take advantage of the opportunities that even the drought time, the season that we are in provides. We find a way, hallelujah, to provide commerce. They find a way to reach out to customers. They find a way to tweak their business in order to meet the times that we live in. Hallelujah. They didn't fold their hands and sit back. And so, oh, it's only about the pandemic season. Who is planting this season? Who is sowing this season? But yet, we must eat. Hallelujah. We must survive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, that's what I meant that when it comes to cultivating in the difficult times, it's not natural. It's never natural in the middle of a pandemic. Hallelujah. People will say, oh, I, what is wrong with you in the middle of a pandemic? You want to sow? You want to plant? In the middle of pandemic and this is the way the mind goes because there will be those that will say to themselves why give to support churches and ministries why put money in that place this in this time this is the rough time you know this is how our mindset goes every this is how the human mind operate because it's all oh, come on you don't know what will happen tomorrow so why give and why so why even take time to share the the gospel who's been going out evangelizing these days oh in these days of the pandemic who we want to go us ah, but yet praise the lord hallelujah yet people are doing it and they're getting breakthrough testimonies are happening so but we are speaking about in god's economy you know it's we, we this time i am operating under god's economy i am a covenanted child a man of god i'm a covenanted ministry my family is covenanted ministry we have not stopped sowing one more time since even before the pandemic our sowing in fact has increased and the sure the lord has blessed us amen and he continued to bless us amen hallelujah we fact we we have more services now online than we had when we had a one or a personal face-to-face -face service praise the lord if as god permit i would like to have more services and that's why we open opportunities for more pastors and assistants and servants those who want to join our ministry so that we can also they can be part of this thing and take up a schedule of services and reach out even if it's five people even if it's ten people that you reach out even if it's for one person i remember when i was ministering in a church that we started out in harlem it was one guy one guy and i had to travel 40 about 20 miles I have to travel, to my wife and I, we have to travel, drive about 40, 50, one hour and one and a half hour during the rainy season and drought and, and, and snow. When in the snow and the terrible weather, we have to travel an hour, sometimes an hour and two, an hour and 20 minutes to get down to Harlem in New York City to set up the place we were temporarily renting for service. And sometimes one person will be seated there. Sometimes five persons, sometimes twenty percent. Sometimes only one guy was there. And today I am glad to testify. This young man who was constantly coming. In fact, I was terrified. One night I was terrified. My wife was pregnant that time, and we had this guy who was coming there all the time. This guy is about six foot seven, big guy, but he wore he was dressed in a in a disheveled manner. But he was coming constantly, and I was worried. I said, this guy is really huge. I mean, what if, you know, because it was a shelter. The, the place was a shelter. In fact, I was sharing the testimony with the brother. The other day, he was laughing. 
didn't know this guy was involved in an accident. He lost his thriving business, lost his property and everything that he had and he had nowhere to go. So he wound up in that building. And that message, that church then was his only source of hope because he was contemplating taking his life. So when we began to go there and preach, he heard me singing one night because he was upstairs. He heard me singing. My wife and I were singing. And then he came down there and joined us. And then he met me. He said he was so frustrated with life that he didn't know what to do. He started telling me his story. He showed me the newspaper where his story was published. And we began to work with his brother. And he was constantly coming. He became our contact in Harlem. And one time there was so much storm. I couldn't travel down there. I could not travel down there because it was a long distance trip. My brother, he pulled up, set up the chair, set up the service, and he began to teach and began to preach to the individuals that were there. Today I can testify, our brother is doing wonderfully well. He has moved up, hallelujah. Brother has moved up, hallelujah, up in life. God, the Lord has restored him. He was able to travel home to see his family. He was able to reconnect. Hallelujah. Now he's married again. He's doing wonderful. Praise the Lord. When you see him now, you wouldn't tell he was the same man who years ago had, hallelujah, was looking the way he was looking. I spoke with him last month. He told me how the Lord has blessed him and he's still, him and his wife are serving in the ministry in the state where they are. This is God that is doing it. Word that was sold and planted in this guy's life. The Lord is continuing to use him now to reach out to others. He said he's telling his stories about us, about the ministry, and this, uh, how the Lord has used us. My wife and our ministry to bring him back, put him back on his feet. So it's not just about money. Your time, your effort, your talents, praise the Lord, can be used. Hallelujah. That, that's what God speaks about, the kingdom blessings. God talks about kingdom sowing. Praise the Lord. So, how, when we speak about God's economy, it's not the same as man's economy. In God's economy, there's no drought. It does not matter when you sow seed. It does not matter how much the amount. But at least, hallelujah, you are letting something go. Amen. Something, something got to give. Amen. Give up something for something in order for something to happen. Hallelujah. You give up something for something in order for something to happen in your life. Hallelujah. Bible talks about the widow's mind. Bible talks about the widow of Zarephath. Bible is not teaching that because God wants to punish us and squeeze out the little we have in order to starve the family. No, but God wants us to let go of the seed so that we can receive a harvest. You let go of the seed so that you can receive a harvest. If you don't have financially, plant, hallelujah, blessings, prayers, make sure something, you are letting go of something. Tap into the drought season and look into the heavens and look into the heavens. Hallelujah. Be not confirmed to the things that are happening in the physical. Hallelujah. Let your mind be confined, confined to the things of the Lord. Look into the spirit. Sow into the spirit. The Bible said, they that sow unto the flesh will reap of the flesh. But those that sow into the spirit will of the spirit reap life and abundance. Amen. And eternal life. Praise the Lord. Do things intentionally. Hallelujah. Act by faith. Amen. For our God is a God of harvest. So you see in times of famine, it takes great faith in my brothers and sisters. It's not going to be easy. There's a lot of temptations. There's a lot of needs. God knows that. But the Bible says he will supply our every need. He will meet our every need. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in time is not easy. There's a lot of things to be done. With, with your time. There's a lot of things to be done with your talent. There's a lot of places you could go, hallelujah, in summertime, in a very good weather like this. You have a lot of, after all, people have been indoors for a long time now. People want to go out and live life. But remember also, there's a call upon us. There's an expectation upon of God upon our life. There's family members that need to be saved. There are family members who have not come to knowledge of Christ. You are the Bible that they will see. You are the gospel that they will see. Praise the Lord that will draw them unto God. So in time is never easy. It was not easy for the widow of Zarephath to go and feed the prophet of God first. It was not easy.
easy for that woman to let go first. It was not easy. But Isaac understood the principles that when you walk with God, you are not dependent on the physical reality of things. Amen. Hallelujah. In the fullness of time, there's a service that we have coming that talks about the fullness of time. In the fullness of time, all things will be made beautiful. In the fullness of time, in God's time, He will make the crooked way straight. In the fullness of time, God will perfect all that concerns you. But what do you do during these times? Hallelujah. When are you planting for the harvest? Or are you holding because you are afraid? Praise the Lord. Because you are afraid? Because you have to have confidence that you will reap harvest. This is a spiritual principle. It's a godly principle. In spite of the times or the seasons and the odds of the season that is up against you, we have to rise up with faith and trust in God. He that began a good work in your life. The Bible says, the God that began a good work in your life, in our life, He is faithful. He is able to bring His plans into fruition. One thing that I'm sure of, as the Bible says, the prophet of God says, as the Lord God whom I serve liveth, because I know my God, He neither sleeps nor does He slumber. What God promised He would do. Praise the Lord. But I know God has good thoughts towards us. He has good plans towards us. Praise the Lord. He has good plans towards us. So sowing time is not easy to let go. There are a lot of temptations, a lot of things you could do with your time, with your talent, with your money, with your gift, with your with your with your salary, with your income. There are a lot of things you could do. But we have to look at towards the heavens. And see what needed. Can we be able to fulfill. With the opportunities God has given to you. Even right now. Who can you be of a blessing. To whom can you be able to turn their life around. Whom will you be able to plant something in their life. To bring a change in their life. Many times Christians we often think we give too much. But I tell you when you see what unbelievers are doing. Even sometimes. The purpose for which the unbelievers are pouring their resources, they sow into things that you say, my God. The unbelievers, people who are, have no place in the, kin in the ministry of God, if you see here the philanthropics, all the business, some businesses that you rescue program, that rescue program, uh, this right program, this program, people pump money. In billions and millions of dollars are going through these programs annually. They just make a budget and pour those money. And the ministry sometimes barely receive such support. Hallelujah. To buy Bible and send to church in Kenya or Sudan. The, South, the Christians in South Sudan to send Bibles to them. Or new churches that are growing in Karachi to send Bible to them in, 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 in Pakistan. Praise the Lord, the minority Christians to support them over there. Hallelujah. But I tell you, I'll listen what God is.